Has the government rigged the coronavirus figures? We are now being told by the Office of National Statistics it's 51,000, not 40,000. Sadiq Khan, the London mayor, is setting up a commission to take away slavery statues. Why just now? And Prince Philip is 99 today. All this and more on The Voice of London. Hello and welcome to another Voice of London with me, Ian Pelham Turner, on ALB UK Television and PositiveBritain.co.uk. Well, we start today. Has the government been fiddling the numbers? Now, when it first started, uh, there were reports that Boris Johnson and Matt Hancock, the health secretary, were saying this is not going to affect Britain. This coronavirus is not going to affect Britain at all. By the time they woke up and found out that this was going to affect Britain, coronavirus was becoming an epidemic in Britain. Now we are being told by the Office of National Statistics that people who have in some way been infected by coronavirus and it's on some sort of certification is not 40 odd thousand, which is the death that the government are saying has happened, it's over 50,000. Now, the important figure, first of all, is to remember that at the very, very start of this whole coronavirus problem, the government were coming out and saying, at the very, very most, we would feel happy, not happy, but they would at least feel that they have contained the virus if no more than 20,000 deaths happen. So I ask, what's happened to all these figures? Why have we been so slow in lockdown? Why are we coming out of lockdown now? And then we're in total disarray again. The education departments are sort of saying one thing and then having to do U-turns. We're talking about quarantine issues that uh, now the airlines are saying this is going to crucify our tourism in Great Britain at the same time. So I can only report my feelings at the moment is I tell the government, I ask the government, I plead with the government, do one thing to the British people and for goodness sake, start telling us the truth. Start telling us what is really going on right now because I am getting fed up with a large percentage of Britain on this daily roundabout of being told facts and figures, statistics. And quite honestly, they are blatantly trying to cover up all sorts of issues. Britain will only become great again when we get a great government, I think, in place as well, and that they really support the British people and tell us the truth. So the Voice of London will constantly be holding the government's feet to the fire right now and looking at what is going to happen to the future of Britain. Because if we are not told the truth and if we are not starting to sort of look forward and see how we can move things forward right now, the fear factor, the major fear factor that the government has created over the past three or four months, that is going to become an epidemic in itself. And I look then at uh, Alex Sharma, the uh, business secretary, and he is announcing that shops will open for Monday, uh, providing they are COVID friendly, secure and free. And I look at the, you know, uh, him at the moment and is he believable either? I think the biggest problem that uh, people like Alex Sharma are going to have to deal with right now is how on earth can you really contain the fear, people's fear in Britain? How are you going to contain it? Are people going to come back in London, for example, to Oxford Street, which is our major street? It's one of the longest retail streets in the world. Will people come back? 
and I think a lot of retailers are worried about this situation. We reported the other day that perhaps 50% discounts are going to be offered in stores uh, just to entice customers to come back into their stores as well. So I think Alex Sharma has a major issue uh, with how is he going to create support, who is he going to support as well, because I think uh, where the Chancellor has already started creating some financial support, we've got to be a government, we've got to be a country of ideas, real ideas, to get ourselves out of lockdown. And as all this is going on, uh, obviously Black Lives Matters uh, are coming on still very strongly. And in the second half of the show, I will be talking to Michael Spooner, uh, a black man who has really overcome so many difficulties in his life to become one of the top business entrepreneurs and supporters in this country. But at the moment, Sadiq Khan is now going to set up a commission. People love commissions. Politicians love commissions. And the idea behind it is how many statues are there in London that may have a slavery background to them as well? And they're going to be removed. Well, this is politics on the hoof. For me, it's politics on the hoof. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a knee jerk reaction at the same time. And I agree with all the Black Lives Matter principles of highlighting the values of black people in this country. Totally 1000% agree with that. But at the moment, I think the reality as well is we need to be doing that and not destroying things. Now, I understand the history, the anger of slavery, the reality that the equivalent to 800 million was played to slave owners in the uh, middle of the 19th century so that they would relinquish their slaves and not feel like they'd actually lost money through it. And a large proportion of the slave owners were actually uh, British clergymen. So I get the anger, I get the feeling, but I want to move on. And if Black Lives Matter really matters to communities, I think what we should be doing right now is look to the positives. Look to see how we can create the types of benefits, the types of platforms that highlight the people of colour, what they do, and the real true values that they bring to Britain at the same time. So we move away from that and we move to an artist, uh, an Albanian artist, Alketa Mariva, uh, who's created an art project uh, in London uh, and it's called uh, uh, Through Arts We Rise. And it's a project that is very, very close to my heart as well. I think the idea of actually helping people in this particular project is to highlight people who have been sleeping rough in London. So a, a video has just been shot with her recently. So let's listen to what this young lady, this young lady artist from Albania is doing. My name is Alketa Jaffa Mripa. I am a conceptual artist from Kosovo, living in London since 1997, when I came over to study fine arts in Central St. Martins and became a refugee after the 1998-1999 war in my country, Kosovo, broke out. Through Arts We Rise, which is a non-profit community group with the goal of socially engaging creative people and activists through arts in raising awareness and support towards human rights issues and community values. Today we are seeing the finished work of the permanent mural in West Hampstead Bridge. With this project we want to make homelessness visible and inspire reflection on the individual experience of rough sleepers. The mural is a collaboration between Through Arts We Rise with artist Zabu and photographers Lee Jeffries and Lea Dembuk. We also managed to involve Ben Ayn, who produced a mural opposite the portrait that says, Through Art We Rise, as a powerful statement to what the mission of the art is, to give voice to others and speak to everyone. In the mural uh, are portraits of David, 
by Lee Jeffries, Amy by Lea De Boek, and John and Sugar by Simon Brandthorpe. I wanted to pay a tribute to a member of our community, John Henderson, who died last year in May, and his dog, Sugar. The aim of this project is to shed a light on the reality of homelessness, and we as a community cannot close our eyes to the alarming and growing number of homeless individuals that we all see on a day-to-day -day basis. So every day we look away from those who sleep rough, and we would like for this project to do the opposite, where we are invited to look and observe the portraits of the homeless. I believe that it's a must and essential that we are reminded every day the plight of homelessness and try and help and strive to support those who face its hardship. What an inspirational lady she is and a great Albanian uh, person at the same time. This is what for me Albanians in Britain and in London are all about. They are positive people and I'm very proud to be president of ALB UK Television as well to highlight all the good things that are going on in our community. Now we move from this um, and to football uh, and security at the same time. Recently Deli Ali, a Spurs a football player, was attacked in his home uh, at knife point. And this has affected a lot of professional football players now. And so to David Beckham. Now David Beckham has now put uh, a security system to Cotswold local councils to enable him to put a new security system into his £6 million home in the Cotswold. Uh, and he's going to install a 24-hour security, a gate hut for them as well and much more security for the entire family. Now I get this. In America this is quite normal to happen. In Britain to actually uh, have that type of security system. But when you look at uh, the Beckham property that we are showing you right now, and it is a, the problem again is how do these people actually protect their families at the same time? And that's something that I think we need to consider as well. Yes, it's, it's a very uh, expensive property. I mean, I think uh, the figures that they are worth jointly with Victoria is over 100 million anyway. But I think at the same time, everybody should have that type of security as well. And certainly to be uh, confronted at knife point uh, by burglars is of something that I can understand the Beckhams are extremely worried about. They're a very high profile family. They do a lot of good work in Britain. And so looking at what is uh, their home at the moment, they must be able to protect themselves as well. So we move on uh, from uh, David Beckham and uh oh, it, it, it almost feels like boomerang time. Every time I throw away the boomerang of Prince Andrew, it comes flying back towards me again. As people know, uh, I'm a royal commentator and a royal correspondent around the world as well. So a lot of the time I'm talking to TV channels and people across the world on what is happening with the royal family. Now this is all allegations at the moment, um, but the allegations this, this morning is that Prince Andrew's charity is being wound up after allegedly a large sum of money was paid to a former employee. And this apparently is unlawful. Now, uh, uh, you know, um, where is the common sense of the royal family? I mean, words fail me. Where is the common sense of the royal family at the moment? Do they think, does Prince Andrew think he can get away with anything right now? Now, what is happening at the moment, this is only allegations, so we don't know the full truth behind this. But if the allegations are true after the Jeffrey Epstein uh, situation again yesterday as well is, is Prince Andrew bringing the royal family constantly into disrepute right now? What is going on? 
And for me, we need a strong royal family, we need a strong brand for Britain, uh, and collectively, people um, like the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge have been, and the Queen, have all been doing their part to actually promote Britain at the moment through one of the worst crises they have ever seen in their lifetimes. So I don't know uh, how uh, this is all going to end up, but again, you know, at a time when uh, we are in the middle of so much chaos, it just seems that Prince Andrew seems to be totally, constantly embroiled in controversy. And this is not good for the royal family, as I'm sure he knows. But finally, well, we have to sing happy birthday now. Uh, not for me. Um, um, but it's the Duke of Edinburgh's 99th birthday today. Now I've worked with the Duke of Edinburgh a lot over many, many years. I've worked with five generations of the royal family, taking their photographs and uh, um, I, I remember vividly several times when I've worked with the Duke of Edinburgh, one occasion when he almost killed me uh, during a Royal Carriage Championships uh, photographic session I had to do when I was commissioned as a raw photographer. So, uh, you know, I, I have my ups and downs with uh, Prince Philip, but at 99 years of age, he is still the consort to the Queen, and uh, the Queen seems to be very, very active still, which I'm very pleased about. I look at the photograph that you're now seeing on screen, that's the official photograph. I wonder whether the, uh, whether the Queen's been airbrushed. Uh, I'm not quite sure. I mean, either that or she's been taking some Alexia again because her face seems to be younger and, and it could be true. There's just maybe a, a true reflection of, um, of uh, who she is at the moment and how she looks. But my goodness me, she looks uh, pretty good uh, for, I think, 94 years of age. So there we go, that's another Voice of London for you um, and now I'm going to go into the second half of the show after a break and talk to Michael Spooner uh, about uh, really uh, Black Lives Matters and as a business person as well, how on earth are we going to get out of this mess we're in? So stay with us and you will come back to us very shortly. Hello and welcome back to the second half of The Voice of London with me, Ian Pelham Turner, on ALB UK Television and PositiveBurton.co.uk. Now, as you know from yesterday's show, Black Lives Matters is a very important aspect of what the TV channel as well supports in UK. Uh, and today we have Michael Spooner, Hi, uh, one Hi, of Ian. our regulars before lockdown. As always, a pleasure. I'm back now. And you're back ten weeks. with a force. I know. And more hair. With a force. More, more hair, hair and I'm back. Don't worry. <laughs> so first of all, Michael, what is your take on the Black Lives Matters and especially what's happening in Britain? Well, I, 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 look, I think, uh, Ian, that we have to address this um, well, institutional racism is, we know has been going on for a long time in the United Kingdom. I know many 
subsequent governments have tried to do something about it they haven't done a really good job i think our uh, the population in different uh, communities around the country are not happy about whether it's a statue or roads or or the uh, different slave trader type statues or whether it's uh, somebody that we we're not particularly happy about I think we I think um, um, <clears throat> as a country we need to like do a a, a a process of making sure that we take away some of these statues uh, and uh, we support uh, young black men particularly uh, black people in general um, and make sure that Black Lives Matters as a, as a concept, as a thing, Ian, is going to be something that governments support. I want the Mayor of London, Sadiq Khan, to support it. I want Boris Johnson to support it. Uh, because if those two people support it, then we might get a, uh, some movement, Ian. We, as po at Positive Britain, we support Black Lives Matters. Yeah. And we're going to make sure that we do everything we can to yeah. support but how, how, and this, oh, it, what, you know, in, 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 in practical process. terms, oh, go on. in practical terms, what is necessary to happen when, when you say support it? Yeah. What is necessary? So, you know, um, how, how do we actually support it? Well, what we do is what we've got to do, Ian, is that we've got to make sure that we change. Well, obviously, we've done some, you know, in the um, Stephen Lawrence to uh, 2000 we've changed laws the equality act 2010 we've we've done some legal changes but it isn't about just legal changes we've got to get the police our our white police men mainly men but it is women as well but it's mainly men we've got to get our white policemen to tra train themselves to say how, if they're going to police by consent, they've got to police in a way that is respectful, uh, that is supportive uh, of black young men. But, but do, do, I mean, Go see, the, the, this is where I think the problem starts. Go on, tell me. Um, yeah. Now, the problem starts, for me, mm. in the fact that, okay, there may be a few uh, white police officers yeah, yeah, a few. Ca causing issues. A small percentage. But, but a large percentage of them, yes. you know, are decent uh, human that, beings as well. Are. I they mean, uh, I've worked quite a bit with the yes. National Black Police Association. Yes, yes. Um, and with different areas of the Metropolitan Police that have a large black intake as yeah, well. that's correct. I think, you know, the, the uh, for me, uh, I went to a, um, a Black Police Association meeting yeah. three or four years ago now. Yeah. Um, and they had two chief superintendents there that night who mm. were black. Yeah. Uh, and they were trying to uh, talk to 50 black police officers at this event. Yeah. yeah. Um, that they should be going for higher ranks. Yeah. yeah. Don't just remain constables. Stay where you are. Don't just remain sergeants. Don't remain inspectors. You know, yeah. go for higher ranks as well. Yeah, that's it. Um, and I remember one uh, gentleman standing up. He was a detective. Um, he might have even been up to inspector level and he said there's a glass ceiling yeah yeah there's a glass ceiling for black people and that was the perception as well yeah so you know for me I, I, I look at all of this and as you know I, I've, I've fought for human rights and black human rights all my oh, life oh as a many years many years you know yeah what I feel is necessary to happen is something practical to happen. Mm, mm. Uh, and I think part of the practical part of it is to actually highlight in media in some way yeah. the values that black people as individuals do yeah. as well. Yeah. And I think that's how, first of all, you start showing to people what are the values that I see constantly that mm. black people uh, have in this country yeah you know i see people like yourself yeah. i mean you know you've you've overcome some incredible oh, oh, issues yeah. in your life yeah, yeah. to be a highly successful you yeah. know uh business person yes now you know that should be 
really commended, mm. highlighted, and talked about all the time. Yeah. If it wasn't for black people in Britain, we wouldn't have such a high sports ranking. Yeah, yeah, exactly. In the world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now I, I understand what you're saying. I, I, I get the thing, but we we want to be known more, more, much more for our sports stuff. In we we want or, to, or in general, just well, achievers. Just, just you, achievers. You, you, you've achieved so yeah. much in uh, your life. Yes, yes. I, I, I get you, and I, I do agree that we we the achievement is all uh, what it's about. But actually, some of this is deeper than just achievement, Ian. The Black Lives Matters uh, concept, uh, movement, and uh, process, if you like, is is about. I don't think it's an anti-white or anti anything, or even anti-police, really. It's about really sitting down with the wonderful British people and saying to the British people, look, we want to do something about moving this country on. We, we want to deal with the past, slave past. We were a colonial, imperial, uh, very powerful country all over the world. We want to deal with something about that. We want to do something about now uh, with the police uh, uh, dealing with our stop and search. And then we want to do something about the future, setting chain, Ian, uh, some procedures and processes and policies and laws that will make sure that we don't, um, we don't stop young black men. See, it's okay for Michael Spooner, it's okay for me because I, uh, you know, you know, it's okay for me. I, I worry about the young 21 year olds, yeah. the young black tall men that are struggling yeah. uh, but, but, to, but to, to I, deal I, with. I, I think I worry about them. No, no, and so do I. Um, mm. I know um, you do. I know you do. And I think that, but for me, if I'm really honest, mm. um, I'm not saying that we should not recognize yeah. uh, the past involvement. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I don't think that's going to change people's no. perceptions. No, it's not enough. I don't think it's going to change people's perceptions at all. Yeah, Taking yeah. down a few statues may, um, yeah, you know, yeah. be, be symbolic. Yeah. But, you, but I don't think black people want symbols. No, no, we want something. We want, we want major change. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and I think the way, yeah. you know, constantly, you know, to change things is to talk about constantly role models. Yeah. constantly highlight role models yeah. who are really peer groups mm. within their own communities yeah. as well whether it be yeah. business whether it be sport yeah. whether it be in schools yeah. um the yeah. number of you know frontline black people you know in hospitals yeah that is what i think is necessary i don't i don't think you're going to change opinion yeah um mm from people who may have racist views i can't yeah. i can't see how you're going to do it yeah i mean i, I you know uh the other day mm. um I, you know I, i'm writing about this on a facebook uh, page yeah uh and someone who i i know very well uh didn't realize how strong a right-wing view he has yeah, you know, yeah. He, he, he's uh, saying something contrary so that there is an endemic amount of racism in this country yeah yeah yeah, yeah. The, the issue is how do you change it yeah but just by sort of you know tearing down statues doesn't work no, just no. by saying you know black people want more is not going to work no i think the only way that you're going to change generations in the future is yeah. to really constantly highlight yeah in media and in other methods mm. of what is physically black people are doing in this country yeah yeah what they what they've got to do is change some of the barriers and some of the things in the labor market in the business market uh, obviously what positive britain what we're interested in uh you know in the way the media represent black people the way we talk about black people because see i talk i don't you won't hear me talk about a white man or a white woman 
in a negative way. We, I, no. I won't be talking about that. That will never come out of my mouth. No. And I want the day when we have Ian, every white man, every white woman, who never talks about a black person, Asian person, in a negative way, is then we, we got some movement here. Yeah. Because, we, because I'm not going to talk about a white a man or a white woman in a negative way. I don't want to do. What I want to do is meet people halfway. I want to talk to them, yeah. sit down with people. Uh, me and you have been friends for a long time, and we've yeah. been, been, we'd be. That's how it should be normal. Yeah. For a black man and a black and a white man to be friends yeah. of different ages, of different uh, yeah. situations. It should be no big deal. I, I, I and we, me and you are an example, actually. Yeah. When people see us online, we are an example of how things should be and how things should be. We, we should yeah. be able to talk, yeah, absolutely. have our, our coffee together yeah. and, and do our thing. I mean, I, 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 I think the reality for me, I, mm. I, I, I was saying to Buki Olafani mm. yesterday, um, the yeah. radio presenter. Yeah, yeah. I find it embarrassing to call you a black person. Yeah, yeah, that's what I mean. I, 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 I really do, because you're just a person. You yeah, know? that's, that's, not, that's but, what but, I mean. That's but, what I'm saying. Uh, uh, well, I don't, I don't no, call I, I, you. A, I don't call you a white person. No, no. Your, your, I, I, your I, I, name. Yeah. And your, your, your calibre, your person's hood. And we don't really think of it that way. And I think we need to move away from, I'm, I know the campaign is Black Life Matters, but actually I want the day when it's just all life matters. Precisely. All life matters. I, That's I, what I, I want. I absolutely agree. When we get that, Ian, is then me and you, ain't, we, we don't have to talk about it. No. We can move on about it. And, and, I, I, and, and so, you know, um, how do you move this forward? Yeah. Well, okay, one method of moving this forward Mm. is to um, create a curriculum in yes. schools yeah, yeah. that could talk about yeah. the diversity um, mm. diaspora groups in Britain yeah, and yeah. talk about the history of them. Yeah, yeah. So that right. uh, young children, you know, from yes. when they're of a certain age. I mean, you, you, you know... Um, but, the, but, but the, Ian, did you, did you, when you were younger, when you were at school and you think, I mean, did your teachers teach you about your own history, you know, the, the colonial past? No. The, I mean, it, the, it, the, the, the Victoria, I know you did Tudors, you must have done Tudors and yeah, all that no, stuff. But, I mean, but, but did you get the kind of colonial, because the problem is, Ian, is if you're not getting taught it and you're an intelligent man, what happens to the man that doesn't go to school or yeah. loses school? Yeah. He isn't, he isn't going to get it. Yeah. How do we get our, 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 uh, well, our uh, historical uh, uh, thing? Uh, uh, I, I what do we do? History is a point, but yes. I think, quite honestly, history can inflame as yeah. well. Oh, of course it does, yes. It can inflame as well. Yeah, yeah. And I think it's, you know, because um, what, what, uh, 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 yeah. the phrase that comes to my head, yeah. the past is the past. Mm. I'm not suggesting for one minute that no. we shouldn't um, talk about these issues, no, no, no. but for me, it's far more important to mm. talk about. Here's someone like yourself, yeah. all the things that you've gone through in your life. Yeah, now, yeah. for me, that is what Black Lives Matter yeah, is that's should exactly. really be about. Yeah, it yeah. should be highlighting yes, and making yes. what I want to say. And I asked um, Bookie yesterday. Yes. Do you feel like a first-class citizen? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And until everybody in Britain, irrespective of their class, yeah, irrespective yeah. of their gender, irrespective yeah, yeah. of the colour of their skin, yeah, until yeah. they feel that everybody feels a first class citizen in this yeah, country, yeah, 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 then yes. I think we all have to find methods uh, of actually highlighting people exactly. and who they are. Exactly, exactly. Yes, you're right. I, I'm, I'm, I'm for that. Yes. Now, I, I, what, what I was going to... Um, suggest is that we had George Floyd in America, Ian. What yeah. do you think? I mean, how did you respond or react? Well, I'm asking I, you I a mean, question I, I now. Mean, it, it, how did you re respond? I, mean, I was, it, it, I was going to ring. I was going to ring you up at your house. Yeah, actually, I, I mean, it, I mean, it's disgusting. I know. 
Yeah. I wanted to ring you and, up. And, and I wanted to ring you up, but it, tell me it, what it, you it, think. It is disgusting, and, and so yes. so there, there are issues. Mm. Um, I, I would take issue with you because mm. um, things like stop and search. Yeah, tell me about stop and search because for, for, I for, think it's not. Good. Okay, for for, yeah. for me, I feel uh, the reality, and it could be I'm stereotyping black people. Yeah, no, no. go on. But I, I, you know, I honestly feel that um, um, my perception is a mm. large amount of the stabbings and the deaths in yeah, London yeah, yeah. are young black teenagers. Yeah, of course it is. They yes. are carrying knives. Yeah, yeah, too many. And so, you know, um, I, I want to give them something to live for. Yeah, yeah. Rather than feeling that they should be carrying knives. Mm. Uh, and drugs and so forth. Yeah. But you see, that's the problem. Um, mm. Much more, I, th I think, um, for me personally, civil leaders need to be talking to young black youth as well. Yes, exactly. You can't just leave it. I and, know. And, and, you know, they need to be saying, stop it. Yeah, exactly. They need yeah. to be saying, no, uh, don't, don't think this is, you know, this is something funny. This is part of a black culture. No. Because, you know, in reality, I get deprivation. I yeah, came yeah. from a working class family. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Nobody gave me uh, a silver spoon yeah, to exactly. get to where I got to. Exactly. So, you know, my, my feeling is, I think what we've got to give black teenagers in this country mm my perception yeah, yeah is we've got to give them hope yeah yeah we've yeah. got to be able to inspire them yeah, yeah. we've got to That's be able right. to say you can actually achieve everything the american dream mm. should become the british dream yeah yeah i don't but the problem with the american dream is that they don't they want it the american dream they want it for just only white men well, not necessarily because you have they need Barack it Obama. they need it for every but they need it for everybody and, and, and that's my sort of feeling. That's what I want. I want, and, 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 and yes, if we had a, we don't really have a British dream. If we did have a British dream, it has to be for everybody. Precisely. Every, everybody, man, woman, Precisely. young, old. Precisely. Uh, uh, I, want, I want a dream where we all sit, get up and start saying to ourselves, like me and you, we're saying that we can do what we've got to do. We can yeah. inspire, work in a community, yeah. love our neighbour, look after our family, uh, deal with our, our brother and sister, yeah. deal with the person that we deal with in the community, because you will go to a shop every day. Yeah. There'll be a common shop up the road from your house yeah. that you would be popping into all the time. Yeah. They know you, they go, well, I see, I see that. I know he's Mr. I know he's Ian, I know yeah. he's the, but I see him every day. Yeah. And I want them to be able to touch base with you. Yeah. And look after you and say, look, yeah. Now we need to be doing that as as British people, as citizens, absolutely, and loving each other. And that's what. Absolutely so right. that's what's got to happen, Ian. Absolutely and, and, right. And that's how it's got. Well, uh, Michael, we, we've got very short time left. I know, because we so just <laughs> we, we are in the worst financial. I know. Well, let, let me tell I you about. Let me 50, tell you about the, the, the four years. Let me tell what you. What are we going to do? Oh look, look, let me tell you about the. Look, we got this biggest recession, Ian. Coming. Uh, coming. Well, it's 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 here now. It's, it's here. We got we got the recession. A depression. A, a depression may be yeah. coming in. I hope it's only just a recession. Yeah. But I'm saying, Ian, we got uh, we got to unlock this country. We got to move us on. Um, I, I really think, I mean, positive Britain is about. I think we can move ourselves on, but we got to do it in steps and stages. We got to do it in. Um, I don't think um, that. I mean, you hear Boris Johnson and the government opening the schools, and that's not gone very well. You hear them opening the pubs that's not going to happen no. you hear them doing the airlines are really in trouble but i think we've got to get this country started again yeah. back yeah. working I, mean, I i i must admit you know politically i think he's the worst prime minister I've oh he's he's in, pretty bad he's pretty he's, he's quite incompetent ian yeah but i mean i i pray for him and i i want him to do well but he's very very incompetent He's not doing very well. 
Um, I want the Mayor of London, even now Sadiq Khan, to do a bit more yeah. better. Uh, I'm not happy about him neither, but so but but at Positive Britain, we just keep going. Yeah. We keep working with the local people, yeah. and look, Ian, we, we're going to do it. But Absolutely. but ALB UK is a a a, a channel that is out to talk to the public Absolutely. and talk to people you're doing your thing i'm doing my thing yep. we will keep doing our thing yep. and hopefully hopefully you know we're going to get something Absolutely. done yeah well michael on that note we have to uh, our time is up thank you so much god bless you thank you so for me ian penop turner and for michael spooner on alb uk television and positivebritain.co.uk and the Voice of London show. Thank you for watching again, and we'll be back again tomorrow with another show. Take care and goodbye for now. Thank you.